Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at some rework stations. I've got a hot air one and an infrared one. And how that came about is that <clears throat> I've been watching uh, YouTube videos of guys, you know, servicing uh, electronic devices such as cell phones, computers, and what have you. And typically they use just uh, an hot air gun in order to remove SMD components and so on. Sometimes this can be a little problematic because there could be some electrolytic capacitors nearby that need to be protected from heat or perhaps some plastic uh, connectors or what have you. And um, so often that means putting some silicone mats around them, taping them off with caps and tape and doing all sorts of stuff in order to stop the uh, hot air from melting things or overheating them. Also, um, you will often see that uh, they have to apply quite uh, a heavy dose of heat, maybe four or even 500 degrees Celsius, and uh, set the hot air to quite a high airflow in order to um, remove some components, especially those that have pads underneath like uh, big MOSFETs and so on that are connected to the ground plane. They can absorb a lot of heat before the, the solder will melt. And of course the solder nowadays is usually um, lead-free solder that has a higher melting point. And quite often you will see that uh, they'll have to put flux around these things and they will blow hot air on it. The flux is gets blown away. Um, nearby little capacitors or so on, SMD capacitors might get blown off the, the board. And um, this is where these um, <clears throat> kind of workstations come in. The idea is that you will actually heat the PCB from below to um, a little less than the uh, melting temperature of the uh, solder or, you know, depending on the PCB, whatever heat it can take. But then you only have to add a tiny little bit more heat from the top in order to uh, melt the solder and to remove the component. So you need a lot less airflow and, and uh, at a lower temperature as well. So um, it makes it the job a lot easier. But as I was trolling the uh, internet and I actually purchased uh, the black one there, which is the Yehua 853A, um, I also saw this uh, Kada 777 um, device, which is actually uh, an infrared. It says IRDA. I don't know, really know what the DA stands for, but it's infrared. And then I started to think by myself, you know, that could have some uh, interesting use cases. Because unlike um, a hot air station that uses hot air, the actual hot air molecules actually have to hit the component that you're trying to heat and they transfer their heat by um, you know touching the uh, the component but then the hot air you know has to flow somewhere and it's it, it has to um, flow around the, the component you're trying to heat and so on um, whereas infrared light they're photons so um, they don't have any they won't be moving, you know, small capacitors around, and also the the uh, heat can actually be um, just put on an area that you want to heat, and there won't be any uh, overflow from it to the uh, components next to it. And also, I'm thinking by myself that um, since it is light, you can actually reflect it. So I thought by myself, perhaps you could put uh, just a piece of L foil or something around. A component that you're trying to remove, if there are sensitive components around it that you want to re want to protect from from the heat. So, any case, we are going to put these guys through their paces and see what uh, we can do with them. Uh, it'll be an interesting uh, thing to find out. So, I'm going to pause and um, reset the uh, cameras to a position that we can watch what we're doing, and um, I'll be back in a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this hot air version. Um, now the actual preheating station 
because that's what it is preheating station <clears throat> of course it doesn't have any air in it at all it actually heats uh, it's, it's actually similar to the infrared one it just has a heating element that um, actually uh, heats from below and um, I've got it set for 200 degrees there's a little button here that shows the temperature that's set for and the um, uh, the actual this is the actual temperature um, <clears throat> I've got an infrared camera here um, which is um, I'm going to use in order to check what the temperature of the PCB is and it is telling me that it is 68 degrees Celsius 67 and I think I may want to set this a little bit higher let's set it for 250 okay so I've repositioned the camera here um, the PCB is telling me that um, it is just over 100 degrees C which is what um, I like to see so we're going to turn on the hot air station and I have it set for uh, about 300 odd degrees and um, we don't need much air there so I've got that set to about a quarter and let's have a look at what we can do that's it and the component is off little little component over there sits yep turn that all that off so that's pretty uh, pretty simple that's the way we expect that sort of thing to to work it's it's uh, it's simple and um, pretty easy when the PCB is preheated you just need you know I've got this set to like a quarter of airflow uh, 300 degrees and it'll, it'll just remove anything the hot air one next we're going to have a look at the um, infrared one so I will stop the recording and um, set that up now the infrared station has a um, different arrangement of course it has both the preheating and a uh, the uh, one that fits at the top here and um, <clears throat> this one can be removed um, so you could actually aim at that component just like you do with a hot air gun if you want to uh, inside of this uh, wand is a, um, a little gold reflector just like that uh, James Webb telescope because it also works on infrared and apparently gold is better at reflecting infrared light than um, silver um, this is what it looks like um, <clears throat> and it's got a very strange looking little bulb in there um, with a an odd looking element that um, obviously generates uh, lots of infrared light it's rated according to the I got a spare one just in case um, according to the box it's rated at 15 volts at 150 watts so um, <clears throat> it tells us the uh, power of the thing here um, in any case the front controls here um, we can turn it on uh, it has two two displays there this one 
is for the bottom, the preheat element, and that is controlled by that button here. And the top one, this big one, is for the uh, for the wand with the uh, infrared light, and that's controlled by that button. And that's simply an up and a down, so it's pretty simple to, to operate. And um, <clears throat> it's for some reason they decided to make it into two pieces and um, it came with a little manual like so uh, which has some Chinese in it and um, then it has some English but the English is so bad that I can't understand it I have no clue what they're talking about um, special infrared heating string true strong and difficult to damage to peripheral devices devices to heat evenly breaking down the traditional hot air welding machine the shortcomings of thermal radiation <coughs> um, I think that they're trying to say something about that um, it is superior to a um, hot air soldering I think the Chinese call that welding um, and um, thermal radiation as in uh, you know heat transfer from the hot air <laughs> that's my guess um, but the instructions are just as bad and I can't really work out um, what is going on adjust the infrared lamp and the circuit board from among the best about three millimeters and then press the fix on IRDA button infrared heating while the arrow keys to adjust high and low temperature it, it is just um, not able to be usefully understood so I have actually uh, emailed this um, the Chinese version to um, somebody that knows a Chinese person that can translate that so I'm hoping to get a little bit more better information but luckily the thing is easy to operate and um, <clears throat> at first I saw three millimeters there and I thought well I will um, put it three millimeters away from the PCB then it got so hot it actually burnt the components <laughs> um, so that was obviously not the way to go and I think I've kind of worked out how to use it I've been experimenting with it already and so on anyway I'm going to stop the um, recording for a sec I'm going to reset the uh, I'm going to reset the camera. Okay, well, this um, device was a lot more effective heating up the PCB. It's already at uh, like 108 degrees. So now I think I need to turn the temperature down on this one. Let's have a look. Yeah, that should be good. So on this one, I can actually set it to 200 degrees underneath and it'll heat up. So now we're going to turn on the uh, infrared light. Um, bear in mind that uh, um, to my eyes, this um, light is not so bright. Um, having said that, it did come with a pair of um, dark glasses, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which I'll talk about in a minute. But um, on the camera, I just want to look super bright. So I might have to close the camera a little bit or something. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I'm going to set the, uh, the top here. I'm going to set it for, let's say, 200. I'm going to try to remove that chip. Now, what it does is it actually um, modulates the it goes on and off so it doesn't act if you put it on the highest temperature like 350 or something it just stays on all the time if you put it on 100 degrees it just it's not on very long so um that's what it does i'm going to try to remove this chip over here you see on the camera it's, it looks all white but to me it just looks like a, a little bit of red light because i can't see the infrared but the camera can
That's it. So that's test number one. We're going to be trying some other things here. But before we do that, um, I'm going to um, switch cameras and discuss this a little bit. Okay, so this device actually um, came with a pair of dark glasses, uh, which I don't really think I need anyway. Um, because as I said, my eyes are not really sensitive to infrared light, but um, I guess you can look cool while you're using it, but um, I guess it helps a little bit. Um, it came with one of these little solar pump sucker things, uh, and it's a relatively cheap looking one. I don't know why I would be using this with this device, um, usually those things only work on uh, single-sided PC boards and you have to use a soldering iron and you heat up the solder and then you suck it up but uh, maybe there's something that I don't know um, it came with a little bit of um, wick and it came with these three tweezers uh, a bent pair, a straight pointy pair, and a little stubby one. Um, they seem to be okay. They're not bad. They're too bad quality uh, tweezers. Okay, just for the heck of it, I've got a little PCB here that actually has a second little board um, soldered onto it. And um, I'm going to try to remove that. And also, it is encased with the tiny little capacitors, and there is some uh, electrolytics around it. So I'm going to put a bit of L foil around the electrolytics, and then we're going to use a thermal camera to see how hot they get after this board might come off. So um, I'm going to mount it on the uh, rework station now, and we will see what we end up with. All right, so. What I've done is um, I put a bit of L foil over this area here, and but I didn't put it over here. So I'm going to use the thermal camera afterwards and see if there is any difference, um, and also to judge how well I can actually aim this infrared light at this little board, and see if that will um, come off. All right. 200 degrees on the bottom and now I'm going to wait until I see the board get to a uh, like 100 degrees Celsius or more the surrounding area is already a little bit over 100 but the little, the little board itself this is 97, 98, I think we will add Let's try that first. And let's have a look now. It seems to me that it is um, things pretty well.
Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, Yep. Okay, so um, that came off. This is board. No visible damage. Now, let's have a look what we can find out about the temperature of these components. Capacitors are telling me that they are at 105 degrees. The board is 169. So that's counting down. But actually, even the, the little capacitors that I didn't cover up, they're like 124. Um, so it looks like the L-foil actually worked. is a strange component here with a ceramic top on it and it's a light light colored so i'm going to have a look what that does so we're going to um heat the board up i'll put it on pause for a second until the board is up to temperature right the um board is at temperature i think Now we're going to turn on the uh, infrared. All right.
this one's going to be more difficult for a start it is not uh, black and also there is an overhang the actual pins on uh, underneath and uh, it'll be interesting to see if the if you've got hot air you can just pass it through the uh, the edges there and put some flux on it and that would come off uh, i wonder if i can shine the infrared light to the edges here just like you would with hot air Obviously, it can take a while to get through the ceramic as well as an insulator of sorts. And I don't see it wanting to come off. What's the temperature of it? 212 degrees C should be close to the uh, melting point of the solder and we'll turn the heat up a little bit below it Oh, I think we might have hit a limitation here with that. It's going to come off. I don't even know what that thing is. is it? No, I think. was over well over 200 like 220 degrees or something so let's have a look now if um the hot air version can actually get that thing off i'm going to pause this and okay so we got it set up on the uh, hot air version <clears throat> now i see no if I put the uh, hot air gun right at the top of it, like we did with the uh, infrared one, uh, it's not going to do anything because 
this is actually a ceramic layer on top of a chip that's actually underneath I can't even see the pins so I am suspecting I think normally it probably would put some flux on there or something and hope it goes underneath but I'm going to try to do it without <clears throat> and um, I'm, I am going to have to um, take the hot air gun and um, aim it at the edges I think it is interesting to note that the um, infrared one even though it got the chip right up to 220 degrees uh, celsius or, or more but um i actually tried to touch one of the little um components next to it they weren't actually uh, loose and these plastic um led bodies over here were not actually um damaged by it overheated by it so um i thought that was notable <coughs> okay I think that should be good enough. Get some hot air. I'm actually going to set it to about 400 degrees and 30% air. Kind of awkward with the camera there. There's some little components right next to it there. Yes, I wonder if they will go. Well, the chip didn't come off. It's a BGA chip, so that would that would come off with the infrared. But in any case, it's true that the hot air worked better for that kind of thing. All right. So what we have learned is that. Um, I didn't know what that thing was. I don't know why there was a. Uh, this, did that work as a heat sink or something? A piece of ceramic on the top? Beats me. Anyway, um, they're still used for uh, hot air, obviously. Um, if that uh, chip had, didn't have that uh, ceramic thing glued to the top of it, it would have uh, come off very well with the uh, infrared. So um, it seems that the infrared station um, works pretty well in some instances. Um, and um, yeah, there's no hot air and stuff, but sometimes you still need hot air. So well, that's all we've got for now. So um, got some more videos coming soon. Oh, and just in case um, you are interested, let me see now. Um, This is the listing of the uh, the infrared one on uh, AliExpress, and um, it came in a box like that. And um, the the um, hot air preheating station that we have here is um, it's this one here <clears throat> 110 volts and it was the one what's the difference 
one came with a stand and one didn't. Okay, I got the one with the stand, so that's why I don't know what this is the one I got. So anyway, um, I am glad to have both of them because at different times, um, I would use either one. Um, but I I am quite impressed with the infrared one. It's kind of nice not having to um, blow hot air on stuff. In any case, as I said, this is all I got, and um, I will uh, see you later with some more videos. Got some stuff coming on uh, soldering iron, soldering stations, and desoldering stations, and.